Hi, my name is Leah and I'm an educator with the National World War II Museum. Thank you so much for joining us today for part two of our three-part series on innovators and scientists from World War II. Today, we're gonna to be um, covering one of my favorite stories from World War II. We're gonna be learning about a woman named Bessie Blount. Um, she was a woman who <laughs> learned how to write with her teeth and feet when she was seven years old um, because she was upset that her teacher told her not to write with her left hand. Um, when she grew up, she went on to become one of the first African-American physical therapists um, and invented several medical devices that we still use today and um, also became a forensic analyst for police departments on the East Coast. All right, so we're going to hear from Christina. as She tells us a little bit about her life. I'm Christina Jackson. I'm a Girl Scout senior and I go to North Shore High School. This is the history of Bessie Blount. A seven-year-old girl was sitting in a classroom when suddenly her teacher struck her hand and reprimanded her for using her left hand to write. This young girl was named Bessie Blount. She was appalled by this ridiculous reprimand and, just despite her teacher, decided she would learn to write with not only her right hand, but also her two feet and teeth. Despite being forced to stop her formal education at grade six due to lack of educational opportunities for black children, she went on to get her GED and grew up to become a physical therapist in New York City, one of the few African-American physical therapists at the time. She used her skills to teach World War II amputees to write with their feet and mouth. As she continued to work with amputees from World War II, she decided to design something called a portable receptacle support. This contraption would dispense one mouthful of food when the patient bit down on a tube. She designed this contraption herself in her own kitchen using plastic around her house and melting it into a mold and using an ice pick to carve it. She worked late throughout the middle of the night after her normal shifts until she had a design she liked. She received a patent and a standing ovation for this design, which was described as ingenious. She also designed the kidney-shaped basin that's used every day today in hospitals as a way to catch fluid or debris. It's shaped so it can wrap around the body to more easily catch the waste. She first designed it out of paper mache and baked it to make it hard. It's now used all the time in the medical field. She received patents for both of these designs, but the US government wasn't interested at the time. She went to Canada and Belgium and was able to manufacture her design there first. She was one of the first inventors in the field of physical therapy. Later in life, she switched careers to forensic science. During her time as a physical therapist, she noticed changes in patients' handwritings as their condition progressed. This led her to write a technical paper on medical graphology or the study of handwriting on how someone's handwriting can reflect their state of health, stress, or physical environment. She shifted over into forensic science as a handwriting analyst. She became the first black woman to train at Scotland Yard and worked for police departments as chief examiner in Virginia and New Jersey. She became an expert witness in many trials using her expert knowledge in forensics to examine evidence in court cases. Outside of her career, Bessie was an interpretive dancer and used this background to help her physical therapy patients in innovative ways. She was a fierce advocate for traditionally oppressed communities. She also enjoyed writing as a journalist on the side. This concludes the moment in history with Bessie Blount. All right, well, thanks to that moment in history with Christina, um, we got to learn all about Bessie Blount. Um, I absolutely love the story about her learning to write with her teeth and her feet just despite her teacher. And I can't believe that she was able to design a feeding apparatus just from things in her own kitchen. Um, pretty impressive. So thanks to Christina, we have learned that Bessie finished out her career as a chief document examiner. So she provided expert witness in cases um, as a forensic handwriting analyst. So forensic handwriting analysts or document examiners um, use computer equipment and scientific tests to try and figure out whether or not documents are real or fake. So they look at the handwriting to try and determine different patterns um, or inconsistencies in the writing and the style. They use specialized equipment like cameras or microscopes um, or UV light or infrared light to try and see things that are invisible to the naked eye. Um, so today we're going to learn how to do our own forensic handwriting analysis. So let's take a look here. All right, so here I have written Francis Wills six times. So five of these times were not written by me. They're written by a friend of mine. 
And on the sixth one, I tried to copy his handwriting. So I've mixed in my fake forgery in there. Um, so we're going to try and look at the different clues that different handwriting um, analysts would look at to try and see if we can figure out which one is my fake. OK, so the first thing that handwriting analysts would look at is style and slant. So they're going to look at the general style of um, the writing. So, you know, different people are going to write W's or F's um, in different ways here in World War, as you can see, I've, the first one, the W's have really sharp points. The second one, it's more rounded. Um, so they're going to look at things like that. So what are the typical style indicators of this person? Um, they're going to look at all the handwriting. Is it similar, but they know that nobody's going to write their signature the exact same way twice. So if there's anything that's an exact match, that's going to be a red flag to them. They're also going to look at word position. Where is it positioned on the line? Um, you know, are the things going to be straight on the line? Are they going to be above it or below it? Um, what about letter spacing? Um, are the words going to be more spaced apart because the letters are naturally further apart um, and wider? Or are the letters going to be more narrow, you know, placed closer together? So you can see on World War II, um, the top one, it's, even though it's the same you know, number of letters, it stretches out much further than the one on the bottom because the letters are further apart. We're also going to look at something called blunt ends. So if you look at the R here, you can see it naturally sort of tapers off when somebody is writing at a normal speed, then they're going to, the pen is just going to naturally sort of taper off at the end. If somebody's writing slowly and deliberately, like they're trying to copy something or not make a mistake, then they're going to be um, things called blunt ends. So if you're looking at the R here, you can see that it's thick all the way to the end rather than a tapered there are also things called forger's tremors. So when somebody is trying to copy something, they're naturally going to have just a slight shake to their hand. Um, sometimes it can be barely, um, barely perceptible, but it will be there. So here you can see um, a little bit of shakiness to the W on the second one, like someone was trying to copy something. Um, they also look for things called patching. So if there's any sort of darker areas, if it looks like somebody went back and wrote over something to try and fix it, that's going to be a red flag. They'll also look at pen weight. So different people naturally write with different pen weights. Some people push down harder. Some people write really lightly. So if there's any sort of um, discrepancy on that end. So you can see on the top one here, um, it's a lot lighter. You know, the, the lines are thinner and lighter. And the bottom one, somebody wrote harder, so it's a lot thicker. So I want you guys to try and use these clues to see if you can figure out which one of these is me. So in the comments, if you're writing right now, as soon as you have a guess, um, these are numbered one through six. So this top one is number one, obviously, two, three, four, five, six. So write the number of the line that you think that my fake forgery is on. So let's go through our different indicators. So we're gonna look at style and slant. So the first thing I kind of notice is like, okay, these Fs are a little bit weird, <laughs> right? So they kind of slant up and a little bit to the right. So we can kind of go down the line and see, okay, do all these Fs sort of look the same? Do any of them sort of, you know, jump out at you as being slightly different and not following these kind of, um, these characteristics? What about the R? You can see it kind of also kind of swoops up as well. Um, do any of them sort of not follow that pattern? Um, we're going to look at word position on the line. Um, so you can see the F kind of comes down below or at the line on almost every single one of them, and the W as well so at or above the line on almost every single one of them. Um, we can look at letter spacing. I think the easiest way is just to kind of go down the line here and see do any sort of stick out further um, or stick in, you know, is any of them a little bit off in length than the rest of them? Do we see any blunt ends? Do we see any shakiness, any of the handwriting? Um, is there any patching? What about pen weight, you know, um, looking here are, what about the thickness, I guess, of the writing? Is any of it a little bit lighter? Is any of it a little bit darker? Um, so looking at all these characteristics, I think I did a pretty good job of <laughs> disguising my handwriting, but do you guys have any guesses of which one is me? So I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to write in the comments, and then I will reveal the answer. All right, so time is up. The answer is number five. So number five is my writing. Um, I think you can kind of tell, you know, my dead giveaway is the F. I did a pretty bad job on the F, but I think the rest of it I did pretty good. So the F, as you can see, it's a much flatter than the rest of these. Um, 
also, funnily enough, I didn't even think about this until afterwards when I was actually going through all these clues and I realized these clues actually really work because I wasn't even thinking about it. But if you look at the word position, the F here does come down at or below the line, except for mine. Mine, I'm like floating up here for some reason. And then with the W's as well, he sits pretty much just at the line, except for this one. And then mine, I kind of dip down a little bit as well. And then also um, letter spacing. I think I did pretty good, but if you can kind of tell that my words stretch out a little bit longer than the rest of his. Also for pen weight, he naturally writes a little bit harder than I do. My wills here, as you can see, is just a little bit lighter than the rest of his. All right, so great work. Um, we're going to be sharing a PDF. Oh, let me go back, actually. Um, to give you some examples. So we're going to be sharing a PDF. So here are three other exercises that you can do to practice your forensic handwriting analysis skills. So these are three different sets of handwriting and in, within each one of these is one fake. So see if you can identify which one is the fake one. Um, if you want, you can also play this type of game with um, your friends or family, you know, have them try and write out their handwriting and see if, um, and have somebody do a forgery of their handwriting and see if you can figure out which one is fake. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we hope to see you next week for our final installment of our three-part series. We're gonna learn about a nuclear physicist who broke a law of nature and went on to prove two more scientific theories and um, help solve an important problem during World War II. All right, we'll see you next time.